Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking these two brands, CeraVe and Cetaphil. Now, these aren't brands that you'll often see on Mad About Skin. They're not my favorite skincare brands, but I know so many of you guys out there absolutely love them and use them in your day-to-day -day skincare routine. The reason I wanted to film a video and an update on these today is because both brands have gone through a significant reformulation in the past three months. There's lots of videos out there on YouTube comparing and contrasting Cetaphil and CeraVe, but of course, none of them have been filmed after the reformulation, meaning it's a whole all different product entirely. I want to look at these and work out whether they've been changed for the better or for the worse, whether there's still a place for them in your skincare routine and kind of help you guys to navigate the minefield that is drugstore skincare. So sit back, relax, and let's talk all things Cetaphil and CeraVe. Now, before we jump into this, I want to issue a big old disclaimer and caveat. I personally don't reach for either CeraVe or Cetaphil in my day-to-day -day skincare routine. That's because neither of these brands are entirely cruelty-free and I like to shop cruelty-free brands when it comes to my own skincare. However, However, everyone's decisions and reasons for purchasing products differ, and I always say do what's right for you. What's right for your budget, your skin type, your purchasing ethos, and of course what you want to get out of the products themselves. The reason I wanted to film this video is because so much has changed with these products, I thought it was worthy of an update to keep you guys informed and so you can make your own decisions on whether these products remain right for you and your skincare routine. With all that being said, shall we cut the waffle and shall we delve straight on in? Now I know a lot of people say that these are basically the same brand. I often got them really confused, particularly because they're newer launches here in the UK where I know they're very well established over in the US. They have very similar packaging, blue versus green. They also have very similar price points. Here in the UK they tend to be a little bit more up there in price point than what is super affordable and drugstore over in the US. So you've got to be mindful around the price point. I'll leave links to all the products mentioned below if you want to check the price point wherever you are in the world. I know they're both recommended by dermatologists and professionals quite regularly as a really great option as brands for people that have sensitive skin. Maybe want to minimize the number of ingredients that are in their skincare routine and dial back any redness on sensitivity. The feedback that you guys give me tends to be mixed. Some people absolutely love CeraVe and say honestly it's their ride or die best friend brand. Some people say honestly through trial and error I've just found some better brands that are out there. This is kind of the position that I've been in but I want to look at these objectively. So let's start with CeraVe. So CeraVe announced their reformulation first which is why I want to start with them. They said that they were mixing up some of the ingredients in their entire line. I want to compare and contrast the two cleansers here and the reason I've done that is because the cleansers I think from these lines are probably the most applicable for my skin type which is oily and acne prone. The moisturizers were never going to work for me because honestly they're too thick, too occlusive for what I'm personally looking for and I don't want to set brands up for fail in a review so I thought the cleansers would be a really good place to compare and contrast the before and after reformulations. So CeraVe actually changed their whole skincare line. They removed parabens which I think was the biggest and most significant change. Now parabens have sometimes been demonized by certain sections of the skincare community saying that they can be absorbed into our bloodstream and, co and cause issues within the body. There is no conclusive scientific evidence out there that that is the case. It's something that's still under review. However, there are a whole suite of people that do want to minimize their exposure to parabens. And honestly, it goes back to my original saying of do what you think is right for you and what you want to purchase. CeraVe listened to what they were clearly getting in terms of feedback and removed parabens from all of their products and replaced it with phenoxyethanol, which is another um, preservative similar to parabens, but obviously paraben free. Now, this has caused a few issues for some people because whilst a lot of people demonized parabens and said they were bad, generally they were quite skin compatible. They caused no issues, no irritation, no sensitivity. Phenoxyethanol does have a higher likelihood to cause sensitivity and irritation in the skin, which set a lot of people back. They wanted the parabens removed, but they didn't want preservatives. And honestly, preservatives are a key part of whatever skincare product you purchase. So be aware with the whole CeraVe line. If you're suddenly finding that the line is becoming a little bit irritating on your skin, maybe it wasn't before, that's probably because you're a bit sensitive to phenoxyethanol. So it might be worth mixing it up. However, the vast majority of people will notice no difference and phenoxyethanol is a really good preservative delivering the same benefits that the parabens were. They've also increased the rate of niacinamide in a lot of their products, not the cleanser itself, but their other products. And this is something that, again, it has been a little bit problematic for some people because whilst in a lower concentration, niacinamide can be calming and soothing, in higher concentrations, it can cause sensitivity and irritation, which again is why people that have used CeraVe for so, so long and had no problems with it have suddenly found that their skin might be a little bit more sensitive and they're not enjoying the products as much. 
with this cleanser. I used this maybe two years ago and I've used it again. I honestly don't think there's any difference in terms of how it performs. Do I think it's the best cleanser on the market? No, I think it gives a moderate level of cleanse. It gets rid of most dirt, debris, and a couple of layers of SPF. If you're wearing a lot of makeup or multiple layers of SPF, I think you're gonna wanna use this as part of a double cleanse to make sure you get the skin fully clean. However, it does work reasonably well. I got no sensitivity, no irritation. And whilst it was relatively drying on my skin, I don't mind that because I have super oily skin anyway, so a bit of extra mattifying isn't a bad thing. But if you do have very dry skin, I think maybe reaching for another brand might be preferable. But again, do what's right for you and you might have to experiment a bit to find the right one. The main selling point for CeraVe has always been the ceramides and this still contains the same concentration and the same number of ceramides as before the reformulation. So if that's why you're purchasing this, you won't be disappointed, nothing has changed. Ultimately, I think it's an okay cleanser. However, I think the reformulation has actually been a bit of a backward step. I think it was better, a better product that was more applicable to more people pre the removal of the parabens than it is now. I think, you know, whilst the cleansing effectiveness of it hasn't really changed, I do think it'd be less compatible with certain people's skin types. And so honestly, I don't think this is a step forward and I wish CeraVe had just kept with the original formulation. Now let's move on to Cetaphil. Again, similar to CeraVe, they changed their entire, and uh, reformulated their entire skincare line. I'd say that they made less changes to their line than CeraVe did. However, there have still been some significant changes. Again, comes back to parabens. I don't need to labor the point for the same reasons, the customer feedback and all of that. They removed the parabens from most of their products and replaced them with phenoxyethanol and some other preservatives. The same thing goes that actually you're more likely, or a lot of people seem to anecdotally be more likely to be sensitive to phenoxyethanol than to some parabens. So you need to bear that in mind. Always patch test these products and make sure that they're right for your skin type. Beyond just the changes that I reference with the parabens, which is the same as the CeraVe, Cetaphil actually did some other changes behind the scenes, specifically to their cleansers. So they used to use really harsh surfactants. Surfactants are what gives that foaming and what gives the cleansing agents in the product which really get our skin deep cleaned. So the harsher the surfactant, the more foaming you tend to get and the more stripping and drying you're gonna get as a result of using it in a product. I always thought it was a bit baffling that people with sensitive skin or skin that's prone to sensitivity would reach for Cetaphil because it had one of the harshest surfactants in there, which yes, cleanses the skin beautifully, but often left you feeling stripped and dried. Well, they've dialed that back. They've gone for some gentler options, which honestly, I don't think have really impacted the ability of this product to clean the skin. It still works really, really well. However, it's going to be less stripping and drying. So unlike CeraVe, where I said I think that the reformulation was a backward step, with Cetaphil, I actually think it's a step forward and a step in the right direction. This product definitely, definitely has the same cleansing ability as the original pre-formulation, but it's less stripping, it's less drying. It actually feels really good on the skin, and it's got like seven ingredients in here. So if you're really looking to minimize your exposure to ingredients, this is a really, really great option for you. In terms of how they compare and contrast. I think it was always neck and neck. Like I say, I was never a huge fan of either product, but putting that aside, I always thought it was neck and neck in terms of the performance of these two skincare lines. I think since the reformulation, CeraVe has stepped backwards and I actually don't think the reformulation has benefited the product line at all, particularly around dialing up the rate of niacinamide in a lot of their products without really letting the consumer know or alerting people to it, leading to a lot of people saying it burns, they've got sensitivity, irritation. I honestly think step back. I think Cetaphil have taken a re really big step forward. So whilst I'd say they were neck and neck, I think honestly Cetaphil in its current state wins hands down when you compare and contrast Cetaphil versus CeraVe. I think this is a really, really nice cleansing product. I, if it was entirely cruelty free, I wouldn't consider using it for my own skincare routine. You get a lot of product for the money, meaning you can use it on the body as well, which I absolutely love. It's gentle. It definitely cleans as well as the old product pre-reformulation, but it's less stripping, less drying, and a huge step forward. If you don't like parabens, it's a great like both of these would work for you because their lines are now paraben free. However, I would say I, that's not something I particularly buy into. If Cetaphil went entirely cruelty free, honestly, I'd buy this again and again and again and use it in my skincare routine. However, I think CeraVe have actually taken a step back and it surprises me because I always thought that that brand was dermatologically led. And so it surprises me that they've decided that parabens are the demon and they want to remove them from the product. I kind of expected them to be more forward thinking than that and actually look at the scientific data out there, which doesn't categorically prove there's anything wrong with parabens. They listened to the consumer feedback from the lobby, the anti-paraben lobby, and changed the product. And I think they've changed it for the worse for a lot of people out there. I would really love to know what your thoughts and feelings are. Have you tried these products before and after the reformulation? Have you noticed any difference? Which is your favorite? Let's, you know, let's take a vote down below. Leave me a comment. Are you Cetaphil or Team CeraVe? Let me know. Honestly, neither of these brands I'm going to continue to spot until they go cruelty free. But if either of them did, I think I'd definitely take a second look at the Cetaphil cleanser. I think it's a really great option for the price point. I like the 
a limited number of ingredients because it's an easy cleanse that's really effective. And I think they've definitely tweaked and reformulated the product for the better. So that's a ding, 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 holy grail change and reformulation in my book. The moisturizing creams have changed in very similar ways to what I've just referenced with the cleansers here. And again, I think the same findings are there. I think it's a step back for CeraVe, but I think a step forward or stayed the same in terms of the performance with Cetaphil. But again, your comments will be much appreciated because I'd love, love, love to know your thoughts and feelings. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.